as commented in the question box. So if you're here hanging out, lurking a little bit, but you are hoping to get a copy of today's recording, then you do need to make a comment in that question box. We're going to get started in talking about how you can get your local business on Google Search and Maps. You'll see again if you need closed caption, this is the place to go. It will open up another browser. You'll have a gear icon at the very top right hand corner. You can adjust the fonts and everything, make it comfortable for you, and you are ready to go. If you need to know anything more about Google and Google resources, you can go right here to this URL, grow.google google slash small businesses and you will see there's so much information there and it's very helpful especially if you're just getting your feet on the ground as a small business so let me know are you new in business have you been in business for a while if you have let me know how many years let me know that in the question box and we'll get started again this is a grow with google program so if you'll use the hashtag grow with google it not lets not only lets your contact spheres know that you're leveling up your skills but it also lets the google team know that this matters to you which is what i love because it encourages them to create more programs like this and more webinars to empower you as a small business to really use the tools that you have available to you through your personal Gmail or personal Google account. So I don't see anybody, we've got some other people that just came in, so you might be finding your way around the question box. Let me know and say hello, but do know that if you want a copy of today's recording, you do have to make a comment here in the question box. My gosh, 14 years. So we have somebody here with 14 years in small business, congratulations. I know that's not an easy climb. Wonderful to see that. Okay, somebody here with two years, somebody brand new with an idea, so you're an ideation, perfect. Absolutely, Karen, thank you so much for making a comment there. Anybody else wanna shout out how many years they've been in business? And of course, if you're tweeting or posting and you want to tag me, you're welcome to use my Twitter account here, Maria Duran, or to tag me at my Instagram account. I will be happy to retweet you, repost you, put you in my stories, whatever you need. Nicole, wonderful, no worries. New in business, absolutely understand. A future partner, welcome, welcome. I look forward to seeing you become a future partner. Today, we are going to be delving into how and what a Google business profile is. Let me know in the question box, how many of you have a Google profile? Why for yes and for no? How many of you already have one? Because I'd like to know the speed in which I need to present this presentation because the training that I'm doing, again, I can customize it for every, every specific audience and I wanna know what you need. So I see a couple of yeses, a couple of no's. Okay, for those of you that did say yes, how many of you post um, have a posting strategy for those who said yes how many have a posting strategy and how many are um, actively looking at and responding to the reviews so just let me know posting strategy if you want to put that there that yes you have a posting strategy or yes you are responding to your reviews i'd love to know how active you are on your google business profile i will be for many of you who said no here talking about how you can create a business profile for those of you who already have one make sure that you do tune in and really focus because there might be some things that you missed that have everything to do with your visibility on google so it could be impacting that how to manage your business info because a google business profile is where you the business owner absolutely have the control of what google shows on your hours of operation your services your products all of that you control that but you have to claim it and prove that you're the owner of the business Okay, so no strategy yet, no worries. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about that. And then everything that I'm talking about today is 100% free, 100% free. So do not believe the myth that there's any cost to a Google business profile. If you've been called by an unscrupulous marketing firm that said that there's a cost, they may be, you know, it could be something as far as content, they're taking photos, videos, they're writing the content for you, they're manually doing the labor to upload and do everything that you need to optimize your Google business profile, but know that the profile itself is 100% free. And if they don't, actually describe that to you and distinguish that you're paying what you're paying for then I would say you move on down the road but this is everything that you can do yourself everything that I'm going to be talking about today and I'll provide free resources additional free resources at the end okay so perfect let's go ahead and dive in everybody now of course I'm going to challenge us first with a video so let me go to the video first remember what I said do not freak out if you lose lost sound you need to go back to the phone number then because that means that something on your computer is not compatible with the sound coming through but it doesn't mean that I'm going away forever I'll be right back and I'll also share with you how you can get a copy of today's slides when I come right back okay so let's go ahead and see Vince here 
and we're going to go to video. My name is Vince. This is my shop. I opened Village Tailor and Cleaners in 1977. I arrived in New York four years earlier from Italy. It was me, my brother, my mom, and my dad. My mother taught me how to sew. When I opened the shop, the first person I hired was my mother. This is Bruno, the store mascot. My little advertisement. As a business owner, you're always thinking, how can you do better? I notice that customers come in with the clothes in one hand and the phone on the other, always looking up information. So I said to myself, we have to put this store online. Google lets me decide how the shop shows up. I pick photos. I can post special hours, anything. I made this website in 10 minutes using the website builder. And I'm not kidding. Now people walk in and I'm always asking, how did you find us? They used to say, I saw Bruno, so I came in. Now they say, Google. Believe it or not, we're up 30% this year. We're doing enough business, I had to hire more tailors and get some new machines. I've got three shops going, and my son Vincent Jr. is running one of them the village cobbler next door. I'm in an old-fashioned profession. I work with my hands. I hadn't thought much about putting the business online. Now, I couldn't be happier. Village Taylor, 40 years and going strong. All right, we got a ha chance to hear Vince. Did everybody get to hear that okay? Just let me know in the question box. How about that for 40 years for Vince? Props to him, right? That's amazing to do that. All right, if you're new in here, you do need to find the question box because that is where you can communicate with me. I customize everything that I do here for every training. So every audience, you're different and I wanna deliver what you need. Wonderful, Karen, thank you. And you can hear me okay? Yes, I heard the voice. Uh, you heard Vince. Wonderful. David, can you hear me now? Then you must have to be able to comment in the question box. So I hope so. But I'd like to welcome you back and let you know that if you want a copy of today's slides, as well as a copy of the recording, make sure you comment in that question box. So if you're new into the webinar room, just know that that's that right hand side control panel is where you can make questions there. Awesome. Wonderful. So let's talk about what is a Google business profile, because we've got a lot of cover to cover in our short time today. And I'm actually going to take this little ear bud off only because I don't need it for the rest of the presentation because I don't have another video coming up. What is the business profile? Well, some of you said yes, some said no that you had it, but what that is, is your information on Google that you have control over. You'll see it here on a mobile device, and what you're seeing is the name first, as well as then photos. Now you'll see the quick links to be able to get to everything on your site, and you can control what those links are, so you have the opportunity to showcase your website. Absolutely, Mary. Well, make sure you got a copy. Thank you for commenting in the question box. You'll see here that it has your location in case they want to visit your location, but do not believe the myth. There's a myth out there that if you're a home-based business, then you cannot use the Google business profile, and that is not true. I've been working with a lot of skincare consultants who might have the major corporation in Dallas, Texas, but they themselves are the local skincare representative and they have the makeup line and the skincare and they want people in the area, especially here in Midland, Odessa, Texas, they want people to call them and not go online and just shop from Dallas. So they do need to make sure that they're showing up, that they serve the area, but they do not show their home address. So they're not freaked out by somebody coming by their place at five o'clock in the morning saying that they ran out of eyeshadow and they need something right? So again, know that even if you're a home-based business, you can use Google Business Profile. So if you have friends or family members that have a home-based business, let them know that that's a myth. They can use this and it's 100% free. And then of course, your hours and your phone number is also listed there and you can control what's seen there. All right. We do know if you're found online, 
people see you as visible and credible, and not only that, still in business. In March 2020, so many things changed, right, in the business environment and the world, that a lot of people are not sure if businesses that they've done business with are still in business. So if they can't find them online, then they consider that they don't exist. In fact, do know that even, it doesn't depend, doesn't matter on the generations. My father is 85 years old, and when he needed a new chair that broke, he went directly for his phone. He Googled who had that brand of chair in the local area. He read their online reviews, he found out who did local delivery, and that's who he ordered from, all on his phone. He never once went to a desktop. In fact, we know that 76% of people will go to a phone first before they ever go to a desktop or a laptop. So whenever I'm working with web design teams, I explain to them that if you have limited time and resources to first develop for a mobile device and make sure it's amazing here before you go to desktop and laptop because this is the first choice for people and that's only increasing. So do take a look at your sites, your websites to make sure that they look really good on a mobile device. We have an entire webinar about how you can make your website work for you and I'm happy to come do that if the Google partners would like me to come back and do that for you. Just let me know because that really delves in deeper about what you need to be doing on your site to also increase your visibility right? But today we're talking about your Google business profile. So you see how it looks good on any device? That means that it's mobile responsive, which is very important. If your site is not mobile responsive, first of all, it's not a good user experience when we have to pinch and zoom to read something on a mobile device, nor do we like it when we have to sweep side to side to finish a sentence. But what it also does is it says signal to the search engine that if it's not mobile responsive, then you're not going to show up in the first three pages of a Google search. So do understand that most people, when they're searching for something, will only look at the first page of Google. Every Google search page gives you 10 organic search results. So you'll see ads, like the pictures at the top, the shopping ads, you might see one text ad at the very top, but then after that, there's 10 organic search results. And that is something that has to be earned. You cannot pay for that position. And you earn that by being relevant to what people are searching for. That's the first part of Google's algorithm, is relevancy. How relevant are you to what somebody is searching for? And that has everything to do with whether you're showcasing and utilizing words and photos and videos that matter to them, that match what they're searching for. So that's why it's really important for you to understand how people search. So as you're starting your Google business profile, if you haven't already, this is the URL that you'll go to. And you may already be on Google search because maybe somebody checked in at your location. Maybe they gave you an online review. It could have been a family member, a employee. It could also have been a disgruntled employee or a competitor. And you do want to claim that because that is a part of that first impression that's still lasting. Let's see, I've got a comment here. I found the question box. Awesome. Perfect. 37 years, my gosh, wonderful. Let's give Chad some applause there. 37 years, that's amazing. Oh, wonderful, expanding your, you know, how many of you, I'd love to know in the question box, Chad brings up a good point, because he said that it was his dad's business that opened, he opened it, and now he's been, or his dad opened it, and now carrying it. How many of you are in family businesses? I'd love to know in the question box, and I'm only doing that for myself, nothing specific to Google, just because I do also have a family-owned business. In fact, as I said, I operated it for 18 years just by myself, until my boys now, my three sons, actually take it and they operate it. So I'd love to know how many family-owned businesses are in the room because the dynamics of a family-owned business are very different, right? So let's talk about how to create a business profile. If you don't have one, again, these are some good notes you can use and these are some slides you want to pay attention to because it's a great outline to be able to follow. So if you haven't already requested or, or said in the question box any comment, do know that once you speak in there and make a comment, you don't even have to request. You'll get a copy of today's slides in the recording, okay? Now, for those of you who do already have it, just double check that you've optimized everything there and you're not doing anything that's restricting where Google actually, or if Google sees this or your potential customer sees this. So some questions you need to ask yourself in understanding how people search once you've gone here to take a look and see whether or not you actually have a profile is what do people do when they know your name and they know that you have a product or service that can serve them? Where are they searching at? Do they ping you on Slack? Do they DM you? Do they Facebook message you? Do they send you an Instagram DM? Do they text you or do they call you? 
Do they look at your local chamber of commerce to see who um, there, the, see if you're there and find your contact information, or do they go to your website? What are they doing when they already know that you exist and you have a product or service that can serve them? The second question, though, is if they don't know you exist, but they know that there's a product or service that can serve them, where do they go next? Do they shout out into their Facebook feed and ask their friends, oh my gosh, I need a fire extinguisher, I have a cracked glass, and I need somebody to replace this? What are they shouting out? because it's really important for us to be experts on our customers and to know how they search, not what we're telling them on how to search. We think they do this, we think they do that. A lot of times we become bogged down in industry language that nobody else uses. So somebody searching may not say, hey, I take care of um, or, you know, I'm orthodontics and dentistry and um, braces and implants. They could be looking on Facebook and just shouting out to everybody saying, can anybody help me straighten my teeth? Okay. Can anybody help me with teeth stains? Or can anybody help me with an impacted tooth? So think about the ways that people search in those words because you have to match exactly the words that they're using when they say, hey, Google, hey, Alexa, or when they're typing it in because they do voice search too. But those words have to do with the Google algorithm on what's presenting right at the very top on that first page of Google search, right? We want to end up there on the first 10 organic search results. That's page one, because the bulk, the lion's share of everybody's eyes looks at page one. But the third question is, if they don't know you exist and they have no clue that there's no product or service that can serve them, how are they searching for you? What words are they using? This is key and critical to your marketing because if you cannot match, you're going to miss an important part of what it takes to be visible to customers. Does that make sense? Okay, the question box has disappeared. That may happen. Um, she might need to come back out and go back in again if it has disappeared. It depends on your device. So I apologize if it disappeared. Unfortunately, um, she may need to message you, Brandy, to ask some questions too, and I'm okay with that as long as you're okay with that, Brandy. All right. So those three questions are really important for you to know the exact answers. And if you don't know, let's say you're new in business, or for even those of you who've existed for a while, you can talk to people who currently do business with your competitors, who are friends or family members, and ask them how they search for things. Or you can talk to, if you're already in business, talk to your current customers, your best customers. It's okay to talk to them, other than just when you have something to sell them or something for them to resubscribe, right? You're very welcome, Brandy. Now, as I said, everything that I'm talking about today is 100% free. So with your free personal Gmail, account you can get there already you've seen that animation playing on the screen for a little while now on how to go to your free Google account if you don't have Gmail not to worry you can go right here to this URL see that at the very bottom left hand corner you're going to go here you'll use your current email address it doesn't change it to Gmail you'll create a password and like any other password protected site online you'll use your email address and the password you created to log in and access all the free tools make sense all right then you're going to type in your business name because we need to see whether or not you're already there. Remember what I said, somebody may have already put you on there and you want to claim your business and claim that first impression. Make sure you spell your business name correctly if you don't find it there. Now, let me go back one more slide. When you do type it in there, it will bring up every business name, that name within the entire USA. Of course, you've got to pick your location. So do make sure you're claiming the right location if you're already on Google Search and Maps. But if you're not, you're going to type in your name and make sure that it's spelled correctly. This is important. I know that might seem like, oh, Maria, that's easy. But this is where most small businesses fail. They type something incorrectly. They misspell something. They submit it to get it verified to Google. And then they remember they misspelled something. And so they now try to correct it before they've proven that they're an owner. And what happens is you get caught in this horrible verification loop that takes a long time and a lot of energy for you to be able to speak to a lot of Google team members within the Google Business Profile Department to be able to see if you can even rectify it. And sometimes you can't because you've not proven yet you're the business owner. So I tell everybody, double check your work, send it in. If you've made a mistake, just sit on your hands until you are verified as the owner. Then you can make whatever changes you like because you're the owner. You have complete control of the business profile profile 
but don't try to do it when it's in mid verification process because you'll be in a loop, okay? So after you've done this, double check your work, you're gonna make an important decision here. You're going to check, yes, if you have a location and you want it to show up in search and maps, you want people coming into your door front. Now you may have a location, but maybe it's a, um, you know, it's a community workspace or maybe it's by appointment only. So you don't want people just showing up at your doorstep. Not to worry. All you need to do then is check no, because it won't show that your address is actually, it won't show your exact address, but it will show you're serving the local area. So when, remember what I said about the skincare consultants I was working with? Well, here's where they would check no, because they don't want somebody, somebody coming to their house, but they do want to show that they are the skincare consultant for the local area. And that is why they say no, because they deliver goods and services to their customers' locations. Let me give you an expert marketer's tip, okay? A lot of people will say, because they know when they when they try to do a Google business profile and they have an online business only, 100% e-commerce online, they'll say, I have 100% e-commerce online business. So a Google business profile will not be able to be claimed for them because it's not for people who have 100% online, um, online digital or online e-commerce access. But what we do is, I'm sorry, I was, I was a little bit thrown off because I saw the internet glitched a little bit and I wanted to make sure I still had you guys here. But what you can do is if you ever deliver something to your kiddo's school, daycare, to church, to your accountant, you meet people at a coffee shop and you bring any of your products, be it that you download something or that you actually bring in them product, then I say you serve your local area and click no. And I'm a really big fan of this because what that will help you also is if you focus on your local area, it'll help you build up your reviews, which will make it stronger if you do serve nationwide or worldwide and again, are online. And that's really important for you to understand. The Google Business Profile strength, its superpower is making sure that you are seen locally. That's everything that it's built for. So once you start getting too farther out, like you say, I serve the entire nation, that is not the best thing for utilizing this tool. It actually dilutes the superpower of the tool. And you don't wanna dilute it. There are other tools to help you reach nationwide, but you're gonna focus in your local area. So as you put your address in here, now you'll think, wow, the last time I just said no, that I don't want people to come to my address. So let's say you're home-based and you say that. Now, all of a sudden you're putting your address in. Well, you do need to put an address in because we need to send a verification postcard to you. And it looks nothing like a postcard. It looks like a W-2 with perforations on the end. So a lot of people think it's an ad and they throw it away and they have to start the process again. So I always tell you, people when they've submitted that they want a copy or they want to verify so they want the postcard, I always encourage you to double check your mail and don't throw anything away from Google because it might not look like a postcard, more than likely a W-2. But you are going to have to put your address in here. So let me pause here for a moment because some people will have PO boxes and those don't work for a Google business profile. You have to have an actual physical address. I was working with a local community theater and what they did because they got mail at the P.O. box, but they're a theater. I mean, come on, people come in and actually see the plays, so they do have a physical location. What the executive director did is use his home address as the place where the actual postcard was delivered. He did say no right here because he didn't want anybody showing up for plays at his home. He waited till he got the postcard. Once he got the postcard, then he was able to make the changes to show and drop the pin on where the exact location is on the map, and he was able to go forward. A lot of times I'll work with realtors and dentists and doctors who perhaps they are, you know, they have 10, 15 people at their office who are also other realtors or other dentists, other doctors. And perhaps the administrator or the broker has claimed the location. So they're trying to figure out how can they also say that they're at this location. Uh, my best tip for you is to start delineating your specific area of that location. Like for example, you're at suite 100, maybe, you know, Dr. A is suite 100, you're at suite 200, suite 300, but call it suites because now you can also have a profile for the area and show that you are practicing in that area or you're a realtor in that actual building. Make sense to everybody? All right, so now you can add a service area. So even if you've said no, that you don't want your address to show up in Google search and maps, you can decide on a service area. So you could do that by putting a city name in or by zip code. You'll see that you could do that right here. So that's right in front of you, the right screen there. The key when you do that 
is to remember the power of Google Business Profile is local. Do not try to go out further. In fact, I live in Midland, Otessa, Texas, and a lot of times we say down the road is 110 miles. I'm just down the road from Lubbock. 110 miles. I'm 100, you know, five miles away from San Angelo, so I'm just down the road, right? We go that far to have lunch and come back. I've been to many meetings in Lubbock where I head up there, and then, you know, that's in the morning, have lunch over there, do what I need to do, and come on back. Still all in a day, right? That's just us. But do understand, for Google, you want to try to stay within that 100 miles when you're putting the places that you actually serve. When you're putting these zip codes in, you want to stay within those 100 miles. And if you really want to engage the superpower of this tool, I even encourage the businesses that I work with to stay within 30 miles. Because if you can stay that focused, now you're seeing a lot and that helps you build up those stars that you have those reviews because now these are people you can easily reach out to who maybe are go to church with you maybe they play soccer with your kiddo maybe you see them at the grocery store or when you're getting gas right so you could be there seeing them and you can reach out to them and ask for reviews and you come in much stronger especially if you open up and you're doing a lot of marketing worldwide or nationwide you come up much stronger when you have five gold stars as opposed to having none at all 60 gold stars is what it takes, so 65 star reviews to show up really heavily in Google Search and Maps. That's why I encourage you to focus on that and use the power of the tool to get the local reviews. So when you do present yourself or go out and do marketing for worldwide, now you have a much stronger case. You're right now a big fish in a small pond. You're absolutely nailing it before you scale it. Once you scale it, now you have those reviews behind you. Make sense to you? Let me know to everybody if this is making sense to you and this has been helpful to you so far. Let me know in the question box. Again, when you're verified, it will be by postcard. 99.9% .9 it's by postcard, so you do have to put your address in there to begin with and then look for it in the mail. Now, once that postcard is on its way, there's a few things that you can do. You can't do a lot because you're not proving that you're the owner yet, but there's some things you can do to get ahead. Number one is by adding the services that you offer. So what you'll see as you go through is you have the opportunity to choose the category. The category of your business is limiting because there's only 3,000 categories. While we add a few more every single week, do know that sometimes it doesn't describe your exact business. But not to worry, even though you, cho you chose a primary category, you still will have nine other subcategories to choose later, which will help you now even show the uniqueness of what you deliver in your business. Okay? Um, oh, I know, Brandy, right? I wish I'd known all of this, too, because I had to go back and do a lot of changes. I learned the hard way by doing and then finding out and failing at it and then doing it better, right? So I'm hoping, I'm hopeful that this will cut some of the time for you small businesses so you can get to it right away and start being visible to your customers on search and maps. Now you can add your services. This all has a lot to do, the ones that are presented to you as far as options has everything to do with the category you chose, but you can also add more. See that right here at the very bottom before we come off screen there at that little laptop we're showing, that laptop graphic, it says add customers, custom service, I'm sorry, add custom service, so you can do that too. Now, you can add your business hours. This is also key. Make sure that you're going through all the business hours that you have and think about you know, your actual business hours. I was working with a business, they're brand new in business, so they were super excited to open their doors and they were like 24 seven, this is what we're gonna do. And they put some Google ads towards it. Well, they started to get a lot of phone calls and they realized, wow, you know what? At seven in the morning, I can't help you because I'm getting my kiddos ready for school and I'm trying to get them to school. So maybe I need to limit my hours. They have since changed their hours to eight to seven at night instead of being 24 seven. So I do understand that maybe you started that way, but you might want to take a good look at your hours and make sure you double check your hours as you get to holidays, because there's nothing more frustrating than somebody who made a decision to go to your location to do business with you. They come to your location and your clothes. What happens is that that's part of that first impression and they're not mad at Google when they drive up there in your clothes. They're mad at you. So it's everything to do with your first impression. So it's very important for you to keep an eye on that because understand it takes us 56, that's five, six other contact times. That's not 56 emails. That's not 56 hours, but it takes us 56 other contact times to change a first impression. Who in this room? has time for that. We're busy business owners, right? We're butcher, baker, candlestick maker in our business. We don't have time to mess up and have to go redo things again.
Now, one of the things you can also do is turn on messaging. And this is important because we all are very much, you know, time is our, timing is everything. And we realize, especially if you're in the real estate business or in any business where people are trying to make a decision right then and there, sometimes whoever they can reach is who they're more likely to do business with. So for example, today you're in the webinar, but do know that you can add messaging and have three other people on your team or other people on your team that you add as users to your Google business profile, come in and answer while you're busy with the webinar. So you don't lose the opportunity. Remember, timing is everything. So remember when you do turn on messaging that they're not going to see, it's going to come into your mobile phone because it does use the app to do that or Google Maps to do that. Understand it will come into your phone, but they won't see your cell phone number. It will also come into the other phones of people or on your Google business profile to whoever you provide access to, depending on their role with your Google business profile. And I'll show you about roles in just a few moments. But if you do turn this on, understand it does act like text messaging. Understand text messaging is very immediate. Do not try to wait 24 hours to respond to somebody who is messaging you. In fact, if you can't respond within 24 hours or at least 12 hours, even six hours truly on, you know, we know 20, 25 minutes passed and people are already getting frustrated. If you can't respond right away, then turn this off because you just don't want to make people mad by offering it to them and not responding to them. You can also put your business description in. Now, I know you have 750 characters here with your business description. It shows you how many you have and a character, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> that is a um, letter, a grammatical mark, so exclamation or period and a space. So those are all characters. Let me take a quick drink here. It's West Texas, so it's been blowing wind. <clears throat> and it gets a little dusty. <clears throat> okay, so add a business description and really think about what I mentioned earlier with the three questions. How do people search? Make sure you're using their words, not yours, their words, okay? Now, after you've done that, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> You can add photos. We are a very visual society. We see that TikTok, Instagram reels and stories, LinkedIn videos, people are watching videos and looking at photos all the time. So what photos best describe and depict your business? Choose some really good photos that show your logo, maybe even your location if you do want them to come to your location so they feel confirmation that they're in the right place. Maybe you're hidden behind somebody. So you do need to showcase what that front door looks like. Let them see what it looks like inside too. If you are home base and you don't wanna show your home, of course, it could be that you're showcasing your product, maybe a happy customer, maybe what the product looks like. Maybe they think, oh, this is going to be, you know, an orangey color. So you squeeze it out and show that to them. Or maybe they've never seen what, uh, you know, a, 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 a VR headset looks like. So now you can showcase and put that picture there. Again, think about your brand and some of the photos that are actually giving more description to your brand. Remember photos, what, they're worth a thousand words. Make sure you're picking the right ones that are giving you the words with a great first impression. You can also start advertising as well. It'll give you that opportunity as you're building this out. Don't worry about that right now, but I will, we do actually have a, a entire webinar about learn the basics of Google ads and I'm happy to help you all with that if the partners are interested in me coming back to talk about that. Then of course, remember what I said, you're doing all this while you're still waiting for the postcard. Once the postcard comes in, you'll go back to google.com slash business. You'll put in the five digit verification code that is in that postcard, remember. It looks like a W-2 perforations on the side. Now, any questions so far since we've gone through this? We're going to talk about how to manage that business info, and I'm really going to focus on optimizing that. Let me know in the question box, okay? All right. So how you can manage your info directly on Google search and maps is you can just Google yourself, Google your business. And if you're logged into the Gmail or the Google account that you created your Google business profile with, you'll also be given the opportunity to manage it. You see that right here, edit the profile, promote it, look and see who the customers are that are following you or that are looking at your profile. You can see all of that information, which is really helpful for you to help fine tune and know what resonates with people who are looking at your business profile. But remember, you have to be logged into the Google account that you created the business profile with, and it could have been your Gmail account. You can now edit your profile here. You'll see the opportunity to 
edit your business info. Maybe you've got to change the name if you made a typo there, your hours of operation. Maybe you reconsidered those and you'd like to change those. You can also showcase your products. So people like to see what they're going to get. We all do not want to make a mistake and buy something that we're not familiar with. That's why a lot of people will watch unboxing videos on YouTube. In fact, four out of five videos watched on YouTube are unboxing. So that's when somebody gets a product, they walk through, you know, this is removing the bubble, bubble wrap, opening everything up, because we all do not want to buy something that we don't have some information on, and we want to remove that unknown. You might do that as well for your products. Maybe you have services, so you can also put services in there. This gets them additional visibility. Where this shows up is in Google Search and Maps. You control what this information is saying, but you also now are showing up really, really high and being visible to people when they're searching for something that they want to know, go, do, or buy that aligns with what you do. And this is really important because if people don't know you exist, they can't do business with you. You can edit the business name here. Now, remember what I said, you have a primary category. There are about 3,000 different categories. Now you can choose nine subcategories that truly showcase what you do. Like Vince, he does tailoring, but then he says leather cleaning and leather repair. He has a shoe repair shop. So he would add all of those different categories here under the categories. And then remember your description. You might want to update that if you've learned a little bit more from your best customers or who are potential best customers to you. Maybe you learned more and now you'll use those words because the algorithm is looking for all of those words to match right and at the number one though of that is also that it is legible and readable and it's good user experience so we're not just talking about stuffing this area with a bunch of keywords don't do that don't fall for that trap that was so 1990 um, marketing or early 2000 marketing now you really do have to give great customer and great user experience now you can include up to three phone numbers here for people to be able to contact you. And then also, so you can enter phone numbers here if there's other phone numbers, maybe other people there at the office or the shop that can help you or that work in your business. Plus you can put your own website there. And I encourage you to do that because a Google business profile really has good visual real estate on search and maps, which gets you some visibility and branding. Remember what I said about people need to know that you exist. This makes you now show up on their radar when they're searching for something that you provide, your product, service, or solution. Now, what's nice is when you put your website there, they can go to your website. And I would much rather, if I'm the race to win somebody's business and their attention, I would much rather have more horses in the race than just one. So I don't just want my website in one location. I'd like to connect it here in my Google business profile. I might also showcase it in my profile on LinkedIn and any of the social networks. I will showcase it because the more that I can dominate the first page in organic uh, Google search. And when I say dominate, it means that not only do they find my website, my Google business profile, they also find a blog post I wrote, maybe my LinkedIn profile, maybe my Facebook profile, then another page of my website. And if it's all about me, then it immediately elevates me to an expert at what I do. And people want to do business with experts. No matter what their budget is, they want somebody who's good at what they do. Make sense? All right. Now, if you do have a location, you can take that pin icon and you can drag it to a location to make sure it's at the right place. If you have done this, understand that it does take Google Satellite travels over and it takes about 30 days for the satellite to pass and confirm the information. So it could be up to 30 days before you actually see the change on Google Search and Maps because the satellite has to confirm. What's sad is if the satellite could go flies over, and you know, I'm here in West Texas, so sometimes it's nice and orange when La Mesa is blowing through Midland, Odessa, and even though the satellite's overhead and it's clear day other than the dust of La Mesa, it still can't confirm the location, so it has to make a second pass, okay? Now, you can also, um, if you don't serve people in an area, you can leave this blank. So if you don't want them to come to your location, no worries. Again, you want to look at those hours of operation, make sure that they're correct. You can control that here. You can also go to business.google.com because there are other features you might not be able to do on your mobile phone or be able to manage and edit on your mobile phone. Also, you might want to be able to put like more in there as far as more additional hours. Maybe you have drive-through hours, maybe you have senior hours. So you have more access to that if you go to this URL, business.google.com. 
Now you can add those products. Remember what I said about adding products. This is really important because now people can see what you actually have. Do not rely on the inception of what somebody thinks something is because now you're going on their past experience and you may have something totally different or more beautiful to see. And one of the things I love about utilizing products here is if you do want to showcase products even more so for free, so pictures of products, you'll put this here first and then you'll become, you'll, you'll actually look at a, a Google Merchant Center account which you can use for free you don't have to use the paid ads in that but we talk about that more if you're selling online with e-commerce how you can showcase those products so this will get you in the nice practice of doing that you can post those products here you can give a description you can also put services just like products so if you do both you provide a service and have a product you can showcase all of this here and you can create your own service you don't have to go with just what's on the list you can also now put some more photos in here Again, if you see a lot of photos in your Google business profile that are of customers putting things in, because I was working with a um, hotel and they have beautiful, just a really gorgeous, stunning location, a beautiful beachfront. But what was sad is that a lot of people who were staying at their place were taking photos too, which is not really sad. I am a big fan of user-generated content, UGC, because I know it means more. It's more, it's realistic and it's authentic. So what was happening though, are people were taking pictures of their toes in the sand and their knobby knees. So you've got all these toes in sand photos and knobby knees that were showing up high in their Google business profile or the Google search when people were looking for them and they wanted to know how they can control that and I was explaining to them that it's important for your customers to feel like they can showcase those photos because their friends and family are going to look at it it's going to put you on their radar but for you to make sure that it's not just right there at the very top and the only thing that people see then it's important for you to have a strategy of posting photos every week or every other day but have a strategy so you're also constantly uploading photos that you control that you want people to see. So that's important for that to be a part of your posting strategy. Now, tips for great photos is to make sure you look at lighting. Lighting sculpts everything, right? And then also that it's showcasing your business well. If you are using video, here's a hint. You can put up to 30 seconds of video. And if you use video in your Instagram post, that you, so the, the story is going to be a little bit big and the reel will be big, but if you use it in post, if you use those dimensions, you can take that same video and repurpose it here. And I'm definitely a fan of repurposing because not everybody's on all the socials, but we know 99% of the world is shopping on, is, is searching on Google. So you can hit the eyeballs and be seen other places where people may not see you. Remember what I said about being visible and there's nothing wrong with being seen twice because that only can only confirms, <clears throat> sorry, only confirms that you are an expert at what you do. Okay, you can also promote, so you have the opportunity to promote by adding those photos, by asking for reviews, maybe you even want to share different offers or events. For example, Brandy, with this event, with a webinar, you might want to put this in your Google business profile. It'll be visible on search and maps until the actual event happens. The same thing with offers. They're visible until the offer expires. So if you have a good offer until, let's say, the end of April, it will be at the end of April. It'll be visible on search and maps. Until then, the last day is when it will no longer be visible. Now, if you walk away with anything today, any of you who, whether you have a profile or have are yet to start one, and that's this make sure you measure your marketing. If you're not measuring, you are not marketing. One dollar or one minute spent that doesn't lift the bottom line or make you, bring you closer to your goal is one dollar or one minute spent too much. That's key. I know a lot of people who are spending a lot of money and they're wasting a lot of money because they're not measuring their marketing. They don't know what to measure. This is important for you to track performance. One of the things that I like to look at at the Google Business Profile is to see actually how many people clicked on the website. If I'm looking at a website only interaction, but even if they tried to call or even tried to message. I'd like that too because that shows interest. And also what's nice about the performance is you can see where your customers are coming from and what they're doing online. And if you have a website and you have Google Analytics, which is also free, attached to your website, now you can see their actual path, their journey as a customer when they come in through their Google business profile and what they do on your site and what they interact with, which is also important. Now you can update things. Remember what I said about a posting strategy? So you can do updates, what's new. You can talk about your offers. You can talk about your events. So what are some what's new things you can talk about? For example, what's a myth about your business that people believe? What are the top five questions that somebody asks when they start to become a customer or when they're shopping? 
So understand your customer's decision journey and the information that they need and present it here in an update. Maybe you have a new team member and then when they walk in the door, this person is gonna greet them. So you might wanna take a picture of them and say, hey, we're excited to bring Lolita on the team. Or it could be, you know what? Jimmy's been on our team for 25 years and we know you're used to his seeing his friendly face and we're just celebrating his anniversary today. It gives them a glimpse in and gives them a little personalization into the business that they're a part of. Remember, a lot of us, we want to get past that. That's my accountant. I mean, that's just the accountant to becoming my accountant, who I'm a part of, who I have a personal relationship with, because people do business with people and they are more likely to leave commodities or things that they feel they can get a better price with. But as long as they know, like, and trust a person and a business, they'll step over dollars to do business with them. So what that looks like is an update can look like this. You can put a great photo in, in there too. So it could be a new service you're providing. You could also put an offer. It could be a new product coming in. They're getting a behind the scenes of what it looks like when it comes in the back door. And you can also put an event too. So you can do a lot of different things there, but have a strategy because do know these updates, these what's new updates are only visible on Google search maps for five days. So if you're not posting every five days, then you're not being visible. Understand the offer and the event will actually be there till the offer expires or the event happens, but the update will only be visible on search and maps for five days. So keep that in mind when you're crafting your posting strategy to stay visible. Now, your reviews are also important, and I can't say this enough because third-party validation is how a lot of people decide how to do business or who to do business with. Remember what I told you about my 85-year-old father? reading, finding that brand online, and then reading the online reviews first before he even saw who did deliver, who did local delivery. So he decided who to check the local delivery with from those who had a great review. So it's important for you to manage your reviews and also manage those messages because people, when they're texting you, they want that message, they want a response right away. So once your business profile is verified, now you can go in and respond to reviews. And this is important. Because do know that 97% of businesses, 97% do not say thank you for a good review. If you want to position yourself head and shoulders above your competition, say thank you for a great review. Then now you're at the upper 3%. You're doing something that most businesses do not do. And understand all of us who are checking on businesses, so we're lurking and we're searching, we are looking to see whether or not you listen to your customers. And if you don't respond to your reviews, we consider that you do not listen to your customers. And we don't want to do business with a business that doesn't care what their customers think. Even if it's to say thank you, especially these days when there's so much effort, they could have found it already on Amazon. But all of a sudden they decided, you know what, I want to do business with a local business. So they do business with you. They get in their car or they look online, they buy from you, whatever it is that they do, and they take the time to say thank you. And you don't even acknowledge the fact that they said something. So it's really important to, for you to do that, to acknowledge the review. But do understand that you're going to get some negative reviews. If you spend any time in business, you're going to get it. It's just the nature of the beast. So having said that, here's what to do. There could be trolls out there. Just ignore those. They have nothing to do with your business. Um, but those, there are some people who will have real negative reviews. Here's what to keep in mind that a review, a negative review, is sometimes a complaint in a different format. And I encourage you to do three things. Number one, get to know this statement. With a response, you say, once you see a negative review, that's not the experience we want for you. I'd like to learn more without jeopardizing your privacy. Would you contact me here? And then you can put your email address, a phone number, your WhatsApp link, your messenger link, whatever is the best way, a link to your contact form, whatever's the best way for them to communicate with you put that there. Three things happen when you do that. Number one is it, it makes them realize there's a person at the end, or end, end of this and we're more likely to be friendly and be able to de-escalate any feelings that we have when we know there's a person reading our responses. Number two, it takes the fight offline. None of us have any time to be able to fight online and to keep up with that and so we do need to manage our first impression and take that offline. It lets everybody else know that we're also listening. But the third thing, it can let you know that there's something that's really an issue. And now you can address it, reward it, make changes from it, and you can better your business from that. Okay? But remember that statement. That's not the experience we want for you. We'd like to learn more without jeopardizing your privacy. Would you contact us here? I have worked with credit unions where people have even put their account number, their routing number, and their password in a public facing review if you engage them in conversation. So you truly are protecting their privacy. 
You also know customers can send you messages from search and maps. So do take a look at that because again, this is staying in good communication with them. You can add attributes like, for example, you know, are you veteran led? Are you women led? Um, because some people, you know, they want to do business with veterans. You saw that I was an Air Force brat. So a lot of times people with military background want to help and support another military associated organization or company. You can also add users here. You can add new locations and you can also bulk edit multiple locations. So again, you'll go to this URL here. You can do all that online as opposed to just being on your phone. You do have to be at a desktop or laptop for that, or at least this URL. But you can add users, which is truly important. Um, I'll show you that in just a moment. These are some of the attributes that you can choose. You can even say that you are wheelchair accessible. Maybe you have a ramp available to you. You can add owners and managers. Remember what I said about the different roles? Understand you need to never, ever, ever, first, you, you really need to know this is never, ever, ever, Give your Google account, so that's your Gmail or your Google account password away to anybody. Because once you've done that, you've given away the keys to the kingdom. They can act like you, they can shut you down, they can shut you out. And it's really difficult for the Google team to distinguish who's the actual primary owner. When you keep your password protected, now you're the primary owner. You can decide somebody else is an owner. So right here you see depicted that Vince, <clears throat> he's the primary owner. But Alessandra is the owner, which means she can do everything that Vincent can do, except shut him down and shut him out. So again, you get the kind of uh, functionality that you need, especially if somebody else is managing this for you. Or you could say that it's a manager, which I like to use this role a lot. So what a manager does is they can't shut you down or shut you out. They can do everything else. But the other thing that they cannot do is they cannot add other people to access the account. And you might want to control that because maybe you only want them to access it and not them give access to anybody else. The owner can give access to other people and sometimes they need it, especially if you've got um, tracking software that you need to link with it or scheduling software, they might do it this way, okay? So your next steps are to go here to google.com slash business and really get and claim your profile or create your profile and go through that verification process. But before we go much further into that, because we're one minute before time, I do wanna leave you with some of the next best steps. And that is to make a habit of reviewing your information, keep it up to date. A lot of times we forget it. And I'll even tell people this with social. Update your profiles on the months that start with J, you know, January and June. So at least twice a year, you're getting this done. And July, right? Double check your work because sometimes we have holidays up and coming. Then also your info photos, take a look at those. But then look at your insights. Remember what I said, if you're not measuring, you're not marketing. Now I'm about to launch into resources, but we are a minute to time and I wanna make sure you have enough time to um, ask questions. So I'm gonna pause right here. You'll actually get this in the slides. And remember what I said, you need, do need to comment in the question box if you want a copy of today's slides or if you want the recording, which I've been recording. But whenever I go to Q&A, I do stop the camera because, or stop the recording, I should say, not the camera. 